He was invited to attend a panel discussion hosted by Forbes Media Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes. And, uh, Mr. Chevy Bay, the Group Executive Director of BP Healthcare. So please join me in giving Mr. Chevy Bay a warm welcome as he presents his talk entitled A Journey of a Thousand Miles Begin with a Single Step. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, student of Turkey. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Chevy. I currently work at BP Healthcare. I think everyone in the room will know a little bit about BP. BP has been in operation for a good 30 over years. I'm a second generation in the family business. And we started up as a lab. Over time, when I, I graduated at the age of 21, from the States and I worked as an investment banker in New York for two years plus and later I feel that you know coming back well going to the States is just a platform you know to learn from the best uh, so I joined finance I don't know is the best thing to do finance now in New York uh, given so much financial scandal too but anyways I learned some tricks there and I said oh it's time to come back and my I'm a bit fortunate that my family provided such platform that uh, we have a company in operation so I said why not join the family business and see how we can transform healthcare basically we we started off as a lab uh, basically serving a lot of medical center clinics that send blood to us and over time you know how we innovated by being from the back end to the front end so today we have a group of 20 companies under the group uh, we started like I mentioned earlier the first one the clinical lab Today we become a 7-Eleven of healthcare. So my my job here is basically to transform you know, healthcare. That, uh, the delivery of healthcare is very different. That hey, you think of BP, you want to come do your eye, your dental, your pharmacy, your hearing, etc. You just come to BP. We are a one stop, and we are nationwide, uh, over a hundred branches nationwide. And these are some of the centers of ours, uh, all over Malaysia. Like I said, you know, we are over 30 years and we are now like a financial, like a supermarket of healthcare. So some of the accolades we have garnered over time. So basically we started off, you know, as a lab, like I said earlier. But a lot of times patients come to us and say, hey, I want more services. Can you do this? Can you do that? So we find that we are not qualified enough. So we started hiring doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists to cater for the needs of the patient so that's how we transform and basically like I said when I joined the infrastructure of the company was already there so my job was basically to optimize the capacity of the company so that people can come and uh, maximize the output of the company so I want to share with you guys on the industry overview of healthcare you know a lot of people when they fall sick they go to hospital I call hospital sick care instead of healthcare we are the real healthcare player that uh, what does it mean by healthcare? Healthcare means prevention, taking care of yourself. And if you look at you know, statistics uh, shown by WHO, most of them will look at it and say, oh, due to communicable disease, due to my family, my parents inherited my inheritance from them, I got inherited the bad disease too. But today, most of about 64% are due to non-inheritance, it's self-inflicted where you do a lot of wrong things, you eat the wrong things, you don't exercise enough, you play too much online video games at home than actually physically going out and play with friends. You know, so we are trying to change that. So some of the things I want to share with you as well, you know, in healthcare, you know, we have become a 7 on the healthcare, but nothing is new. For instance, before we started dental, there were dental players in the market, before we started I, before we started pharmacy, there were existing players in the market. But how we transform is that because we are 7-Eleven, our fixed cost is already there. There's a market price. We can actually earn excess profit. So to also fulfill some of the social obligation, we actually reduce the pricing by at least 40%. You know, so we are reaching out, creating healthcare not only more accessible, but also more affordable in that sense. And what do I mean by a healthcare screening? When you come, you know, I share with you demographically in the past, uh, people above 40, 50 only come and do a checkout. Today, all the universities, they have pre-employment checkout. 
for instance, for free university checkout. Or today, I, I was reading an article last few days, you know, they were talking about a national athlete, you know, competing in China, sitting down on the bench and just four days. Uh, because they didn't have checkout, for instance, and even transport commercial drivers, you know, when they don't do a proper checkout, for instance, it will create safety issue for other road users where they can't see well, they can't hear well. So I want to share with you some of the initiatives that I personally are involved. One of them is a smart partnership. We, we tie up with all the top universities in Malaysia. For instance, for dental, we tie up with uh, University of Malaya, for I, we tie up with Tun Fusin On, etc. etc. What does this partnership connote? You know, I come from a non-healthcare background. I come from a financial background. So the thing I noticed in Malaysia that there are a lot of brain drain where a lot of top uh, teachers or professors who always like to join private sector for a reason, they pay more. So how we form this partnership is that uh, we go and talk to the, the dean, the vice chancellor and say, why don't you keep your professors there? At the same time, they allow them to work for us concurrently and earn extra income, don't leave the workforce, creating the brain, brain drain. And also that, at the same time, still allow them to teach the next generation of leaders in their respective field. So how we came about on this smart partnership. And number two, also I realized a lot of Malaysian students, they are not as aggressive as, for instance, the American students. You know, in America, for instance, kids will start doing internship at their second year or third year at college. So by third year, after they got finished their internship, they'll get a full-time job. They go back the fourth year, they just continue partying, for instance. I'm not asking you to neglect your final year. However, then you see the differentiation between the quality of kids that come in versus today we see a lot of kids who graduated first class with honors etc from any local institution they are not focused they come for interview they don't even know what job they are looking for what the company does and i think it's a waste of time because some of the the speaker were mentioning earlier is the attitude you know they think that oh i can have something to fall back malaysian in general uh, we have a pretty good strong middle class in this region. So they always have something to fall back. They don't want a job, they just sit at home. The parents will finance them. So we have to change the mindset of the student to say, hey, let's be proactive. How do you be the next generation of leaders than just uh, always uh, stay back and fall back on your parents? Uh, another thing we tie up with the university is on the joint commercialization of product and services. Meaning, you know, university, you have, they focus more on research. So when they have research, they come up with all kinds of products or services. We as a commercial partner can come in and also assist on that part. And some of the innovation I want to share with you guys. Uh, first of all, we have uh, iPhone app for making appointments, so making healthcare more uh, accessible again, like I mentioned earlier. Then we have a pharmacy where we are the first in the country to have a drive through pharmacy. On top of that, we also have, what do you call? online pharmacy, so you can basically go online and just buy any OT over-the-counter product or medication and oh, we'll deliver to your home. So we are transforming how healthcare is delivered. Another is, you know, going, they always talk about healthcare, where most of the doctors will focus more staying in the city area and the rural areas are neglected. Here we came up with an innovation, mobile clinic, you know, by the private sector. So we go to any rural areas and we just provide health facilities. Then we even invented our first mobile hearing test kiosk and they can do it remotely as well. They just install the app and you, know, you make healthcare accessible again. Uh, so my talk is just very simple. Uh, I just share with you guys you know, how we have transformed the healthcare delivery system in the country. And I also urge all the students you know, to be proactive in attending all those internship and work, have real life experience. You know, it doesn't matter you come out you know, being a first class. You know, you talk to some of them. I don't know, sometimes I really want to knock my head on the wall, you know. Uh, why are you so not intelligent enough that, you know, you're very good in theory, but in practice, you're just a waste of time. You know, I've interviewed some people personally. I come in and I said, oh, what do you know about your subject? They don't even know their subject well. I said, what do you do in your university life for four years? So I just send them out of the room. You know, when you do anything, you must be prepared in life. 
you know, for a job or business proposition for anything. Most importantly, you must be prepared. But how do you get prepared? It's your attitude. If your attitude is not right, it doesn't matter. That's why I always put a policy in our company, for instance, we always hire people based on attitude versus aptitude. You know, it doesn't matter, like I said again. So, all of you, I hope you treat this as a learning experience and sharing experience or session that uh, I'm just talking a bit about healthcare, how we transform, how delivery of system uh, of healthcare being done. But most importantly, I think how do you guys, you know, number one, your attitude, how you want to do things and be a go-getter. You know, for instance, when I joined the business, you know, we have a lot of senior people in the business for 20, 30 years. It's not something new. However, when I want to do something, a lot of the senior management with a lot of experience will go against my way of doing things. They said, what do you know about healthcare? You're not even a healthcare uh, background personnel. And I said, well, give me some small project, let me run with it, and I will show you three to six month time how this thing will take effect. And I've shown over and over again how things are being delivered and transformed and show that for the past three years, for instance, our company had grown on top line basis, at least 50% growth, where healthcare industry in Malaysia for the past three to five years is what, five to 6% growth. We are growing at 10% market rate. Obviously, we are doing something very correct. You know, if the market rate is growing at 10%, we're growing at 7 What So what about your own performance? One, to all the accolades we have garnered in the industry the most, to the most number of outlets we have opened up, to all the top public institutions in Malaysia tying up with us. Again, what I said, persistency and perseverance that, you know, people will challenge things that are conventional and they have been in their comfort zone very long time. So your job is to show them, hey, look, we can do things at a very different manner. Ah, some of them, they question your track record. Show them, okay, I give you a project, do it for three to six months, come back to me and show me. Then just shut down the door and shut out all the windows and have what you call the ostrich syndrome. You know, you dug a hole, you put your head on it and say, I'm the smartest. That's not the right way, especially for young graduates, you know. So I think all of you should have a good attitude like I mentioned earlier and you know if you think you're right like some of the speaker were saying garner and go to all the top people like they're saying like Hanson for instance uh, you want to go into acting etc seek him for help you know he has the experience you know don't go to a guy on the street and say I want to be an actor give me your experience share with me you know go to the right relevant people you know to get things done up next Mr. Chevy B